Alrighty, welcome back to the show, everybody. It has been a long time since I posted. I think the last thing I posted was back in like March or February about the VFR. Uh, I put the quick shifter on it. And we are out here on a beautiful fall day in some hellacious office park here. We're not here to talk about that, though. We are here to talk about that. That is my new KTM 690 SMCR. I absolutely love this motorcycle. I got it in July. I've been riding it around. I've been spending so much time on it that I haven't been able to sit down and make a video about it because I've just been loving on it too much. So we're going to talk about it today. We're going to spend a good like 20 or 30 minutes riding it around, having a chat, and uh, guten tag to all the Germans who are going to watch this. Because the only people who post about this are German folks on YouTube and that guy Lamb Chop Rides out of England. Uh, he's got one from KTM, which I wish KTM gave this to me. I really do. I had to pay for it. <laughs> so, But let's do a quick little walk around. We can talk about some of the mods that I've done. I haven't done a lot to it because I've, I've literally just gotten it. So the first thing you might see is I have some TST Industries blinkers right there which necessitated a flasher relay in there. I have deleted the big mirrors, which apparently there's some wind buffeting that you get from the mirrors. I don't notice anything different. I have some Rottweiler mirrors on the way, but I have my double take mirror off my DRZ right now, which fits up just fine. I've put the ergo seat on here, the power parts ergo seat, and then I have put the rear wheel ABS disabling dongle into this bike. Other than that, basically stock. So let's get it started up, let's get it going. I am really hot standing here in the sun in my leather jacket, so let's get some air moving, shall we? So first thing you notice sitting down is this dashboard kind of sucks, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, on a $11,799 motorcycle, I really wish there was a different dash. can't really hear it because I don't have an exhaust on there, but it is on and it does rip, so let's go have some fun. So the first thing we're going to talk about today on the 690 is actually its highway capacity because I think that's the single most boring thing about this motorcycle, uh, and you'll see why here in just a second. Um, it just works. It's a 690cc engine that's putting down 74 horsepower. This thing can absolutely do highway speed, and it weighs 360 pounds, so it doesn't wiggle and wibble like you would on something like a DRZ400 or, you know, a converted dirt bike supermoto. This thing actually feels really planted. Even though it's lighter than something like the MT-03 or I believe the KTM Duke 390 is heavier than this motorcycle, which is absolutely bananas. Don't quote me on that if it isn't though. Uh, I, I just am assuming that it is. So as you can see, I'm just puttering down the highway in, I don't know what gear I'm in because I don't have a gear position indicator but in whatever gear, probably fifth, and uh, it feels fine. The beauty of this engine is, I believe they, they put in something like 60, 80% new parts, something like that, for the 2019 model year. This is a 2020. And part of that was they put a pair of balancing shafts into the engine which did a really good job of just mellowing out some of the intense vibration you can get from a motorcycle that's this hopped up but has a massive dinner plate sized bore and very little stroke. Now hopefully we're not stuck in too much traffic here because I would really like to get to a twisty road please. Although being stuck in traffic does give me the opportunity to talk about some of the things I do not like about this motorcycle which uh, are few and far between, actually. I love basically everything on this bike. The dash, while it does suck, tells you everything that you need to know, except for gear, and I don't really care about my speed, or my uh, tachometer 
that much. I can give that up. A gear position indicator would be great. Uh, I hate having to dig for sixth gear and you know having my foot bottom out on the lever because it's already in sixth. I'm getting better at just knowing what gear I'm in, but I've done, let's see here, 1113 miles and I still sometimes go and dig for sixth gear when I'm already in sixth. So a gear position indicator really would be nice, but I can live with this dash. Another thing that I hate about this bike, and I hate it honestly, is this exhaust can on here. This big, beefy, catalytic converter, mega muffler that they have on here is actually legitimately dangerous on this bike. It's straight up dangerous. I have burned myself numerous times in many different places actually. I've burned my hand a couple of times just by accidentally touching it for a second. Uh, I've accidentally burned my thigh on it. I've burned my calf. This exhaust system is really dangerous and really unpleasant to have right under my ass cheeks. It's, it's literally, I can feel the heat through my glove, through the body panel that has, you know, some fiberglass insulation on it. It's really hot. But I have been told, reliably, that once you get a aftermarket exhaust system on there and you delete this big beefy 20 pound anchor they have on the back of this motorcycle, uh, that the bike runs actually a lot cooler, which is going to lead me into part three, is this bike does run very hot. Which for people who know about KTM and know about KTM's history with reliability, they think, uh-oh, a hot single. That's not good because the RC390s originally famously warped heads and blew head gaskets all the time because they were running so hot from the factory. Now, as the weather has cooled down here in Austin, I have noticed a tendency for the fans to turn themselves off more often. Before, I'd get into my driveway and I would just hear the fan whir just constantly. Uh, it's, it's a little, it's a little disconcerting when you're riding this thing around in the summer. Uh, and here in Austin, it's all summer all the time. It is a little better now in the fall here, now that it's not 110 degrees out all the time. And then lastly, the only thing that I can think of that I really don't like was the stock seat. The stock seat was essentially just a piece of plywood. It felt like it came right off of a dirt bike, which for a supermoto, you might actually like that idea. Um, and it, obviously it's not meant to be a long haul motorcycle, but God damn was that seat unpleasant. The power parts seat on the other hand is really comfy. Uh, I'm good on it for about, for about a hundred miles, I'd say. And then after that, I really kind of need to get off the bike for a little while and stretch my legs and kind of rub my butt cheeks so that I get some feeling back. But it is a lot more comfortable, it's a lot more pliant, and the nice thing about supermotos is you can stretch out across the seat however you want. So if you really want to get after it, you know, you can put your weight up here, you can move forward on the bike, I'm exaggerating obviously, but you can move your weight forward like this and chuck it into a corner, you can stretch all the way back like you're almost on a cruiser to be honest this is almost cruiser style ergonomics and it's really comfortable but it's only comfortable once you get the power parts seat and actually this is kind of a bit of a bummer because i really like the look of the seat concept seat but the power parts seat is a more easily available and b a hundred dollars cheaper so kind of had to go with the power parts because I wanted to ride my motorcycle. Now, getting into things that I love about this bike because there's way more that I love than that I don't. This bike is so much fun. And that's what I really wanted. You know, a lot of people have asked me why I got rid of the VFR because I traded the VFR in for this motorcycle. In fact, if you want to go buy my VFR, 
for some reason. Uh, you can go check it out at TJ's and uh, go rip around on that big fat dad bike. But I am now on this bike because it is so much more fun, so much more capable of just having a good time than the VFR ever was. Now the VFR was a great bike, don't get me wrong, but it was just very uptight and very, I don't know, it had, it had this like older man, gentlemanly quality to it. And that's fine, but I wanted something that's a little bit more aggressive, something a little bit more fun and more comfortable. This is way more comfortable than my VFR was. I also love the fact that this has an up and down quick shifter with a slipper clutch in it. That's, I mean, <laughs> it's so cool. It's really, really cool. It's, it's something that you wouldn't expect to see on a supermoto, and yet here it is. I have a, a six axis IMU in this motorcycle. That is straight up leader bike shit in this bike and it's a rideable motorcycle. I have cornering ABS, I have uh, adaptive traction control, and uh, I actually have wheelie control bundled into the TC, which helps keep the wheel down. Uh, it'll allow you to hover the wheel a little bit if you want to practice, you know, baby wheelies, but otherwise you take the TC off. And the quick shifter just makes this bike so much more fun. You can actually really get after it with this bike. And the power, the way it's delivered is, it's just, it's perfect for the street. You have this real big surge of down low power because it's a thumper that's all bore. And as a result, it just rips off the line. And it's, it definitely tapers a bit towards the end, but it does this little kind of M shape in the power curve where it big surge and then it's okay tapers a little bit and then second big surge almost kind of like VTEC although not as pronounced another thing that I love and I don't understand why they did this but they put a Magura clutch uh, it's a hydraulic clutch system that has the lightest most precise just absolutely buttery smooth perfectly feedbacky feel and then they gave you a quick shifter, which means that you're only interacting with this amazing clutch, you know, when you're pulling into a stop. It's, it's really strange. However, I have had some issues with my hydraulic clutch system. Uh, I believe there's an issue with the slave cylinder. There's either A, an air bubble in the line, which I really hope it's an air bubble, or B, there is an issue with my slave cylinder and it's just not getting the right pressure or whatever from the clutch and I've actually lost complete pressure in this lever a handful of times and had to just sit there while I'm riding pumping it back up and it's it's an intermittent thing so and I've only have it ha I've only had it happen twice and I'm really hoping it doesn't happen however can you see right there where the little spinner is touching the back of the cluster I'm not sure if it's this bike or if that's just what SMCRs do, but there's a little bit of a little bit of something right there. But hey, character, right? So moving on, I absolutely love the ride-by-wire system on this bike. Now, ride-by-wire's a little contentious. Some people really like the feel of a cable actuated throttle. Some people like the freedom and, and mode switching and power adjustment that you can get, throttle response adjustment you can get from a ride-by-wire system. This ride-by-wire feels great. You know, it's, it's really, it's really good at giving you exact feedback and the throttle tube feels great. The way it's sprung feels awesome. It, it honestly feels like a cable throttle, but I get all the lovely bits of having ride-by-wire including throttle mapping. So if I push this button while the throttle's closed, it switches over to map two, which is a more aggressive 
map it's not i don't think it adds power so much as it changes the way the power comes on it really allows you to get after it a little bit more on this bike and you feel the you feel that kind of raucous gonna rip your arms off energy from this single while you're in power mode two in power mode one it's actually really tame. Uh, I still wouldn't say that, you know, if you're thinking about getting a 701 Supermoto or 690 Supermoto as your beginner bike, I really would not recommend it because this is a lot to handle. But mode one makes it almost doable. Another thing that I love, again, this is just gonna be a list of reasons why I love this motorcycle at this point is, how it feels in a corner. This bike is set up so well. It is just, it is effortlessly easy to ride. And it leans over and switches direction so quickly. It's, it's really kind of just poetry in motion, honestly, as, much, as pretentious as that sounds. It feels really fun to just do you know, chicane style switches and everything just feels so good and so direct. There's no like ponderous nature to this motorcycle. You think and it just does it. And that's helped out by the fact the brakes on this bike are super good. We have a single Brembo up front with a I don't believe this is a Brembo master cylinder up here, but a solid enough master cylinder. We've got great lever feel. I believe it's a 320 rotor on there. Might be a 330, might be a 300. I'm not sure, but it feels so good. It tows the bike down to a stop super aggressively. As you can see right there, basically just lifted that front or the rear wheel on me. And thanks to the cornering ABS, you don't have to worry about accidentally cranking on the brake lever and just down, you know, dropping yourself in the middle of a corner. This bike is so easy to ride and it's so much fun to ride. It's honestly the best motorcycle I've ever owned. And of course, WP Apex suspension that's fully adjustable. How could you not love that, man? Now I am planning on putting together a more thorough, more comprehensive review of this bike. Uh, a little bit higher production value than vlog style. Um, just because I think it deserves it. And I am going to be keeping up with what I'm doing to this bike. And the reason why is because all of the content that I found as an American rider trying to do stuff with this motorcycle came from German YouTubers. And that's fine but you guys have a lot of different systems over there than we do. And frankly, your bike is different than mine. You know, I had to put LEDs on here. It came with incandescence. Uh, there are probably some other differences too, but in general, I, I just want to give a kind of American perspective to owning the 690 because I couldn't find it. So hopefully, that is something y'all are interested in. And if you are, you keep your eyes here. I'll be making more of it. But until then, I'll catch you guys in the next one.